Welcome to the After Hours Podcast, hosted by Harry Haas and James Friedlender, presented by My Investing Club. What's going on, guys? Uh, we're back with another episode of the After Hours Podcast. Uh, today, we're going to kind of do something similar to what we did last week, more of like a, a free talk, uh, no real set topics, just kind of going to yes. see how it flows. So yeah. uh, we'll, go, we'll go from there. So Harry, what are you doing this weekend? Uh, well, I was going to go out tonight because I never really got to celebrate my uh, girlfriend's, uh, or not my girlfriend's, I never got to celebrate my birthday. Um, so I was going to go out tonight, you know, and uh, get a nice steak, but she's sick, maybe with like COVID or, or something like that, like round two, I don't really know. So Dude, probably just going to chill. Everyone I know has gotten COVID now like two or three times. It's insane. Yeah. Like, I, it's so stupid. Yeah. <laughs> like, I just I just feel like at this point, it's like, again, it's like most people or some people don't even have symptoms. Like, they're just kind of like, you know, just stuffy yeah. nose and cold. But some people are getting knocked on their ass. Like, yeah. my, my parents got pretty sick. You know, they were they were down and out for a bit. Mm. Dude, I don't know what's going on in Canada, but I feel like you guys have also just had it so much. Yeah, I got it. Like, I thought I had it a couple times, but I didn't. And then... Uh, I got it and then I kind of got it again like so I've had it like almost two times because uh a guy who lived with my girlfriend's family uh he got it and gave it to us but my girlfriend's family didn't get it my girlfriend's family got it from someone else and then we got that again so kind of like pretty close to like two times but I mean it is what it is and oh yeah just gotta That's- keep fucking rolling it's kind of funny. Like, I guess we can kind of like transition this into like the markets a little bit, but you know, it's kind of funny how like the longest time, you know, like that was like the biggest like market mover yeah. and like it, with the overall like the spy and the indexes and just yeah. everything. Now it's kind of like COVID's like the forgotten the ugly yeah. stepchild. Like no one even talks about it anymore on the news. Like there's yeah. so much other crazy shit going on. That's like, yeah, I don't know, but I, I don't know. I know we, we were talking a little bit uh, the other day, like you kind of have have started to feel like we found like a at least a short-term bottom yeah i think um, so yeah what makes you think that uh i mean for me just like i've been like i had a bunch of i've, I've been kind of like feeling it for a while because like we've gotten like massive massive kind of panic bitcoin 20k you couldn't really break below that kind of 20k number so i was like all right and then also with the overall markets i find like the markets are really kind of forward looking and you know, I just feel like everyone kind of knows what's going on now. Everyone knows that the rates are going to be like rising. Everyone kind of understands what's kind of going to happen. Like everyone and their mom is yelling recession. And I really think the only thing, and Alex tweeted this out the other day and, and I was thinking, it, you know, I really think, you know, the only thing not putting us in a recession is everyone thinking that we're going into a recession, you yeah. know, like it's, it's kind of like the self-fulfilling, you know, like opposite yeah. of what, what things going to happen or whatever. Yeah. When the masses think one thing's going to happen all at once, usually the opposite happens. So yeah, um, it, that's the funny. only thing saving this. It's funny. Like I, I was kind of for a long time, I think everybody was expecting that one like capitulation day or like some crazy yeah. sell off day, you know, like a 10% day or something nuts. And that would probably, you know, maybe be the bottom. But I almost feel like kind of what you're saying, like everyone was so scared of a potential recession or of the market crashing yeah. that, that all like the weaker participants like kind of sold already. Yeah. And we just started to like slowly bleed down. Um, yeah. I mean, it doesn't mean that we can't go a hell of a lot lower, but like at least in my long-term stuff, like I've slowly started scaling in. Um, I at least started to, Me too. you know, yeah, at least get involved a little bit. Yeah. I mean, out of my like hundred percent allocation for of cash that I want to use for this, I've only like gone in like 10%. And it's yeah. just like small, but, and then I want to start seeing us actually get some strength and like holding, Me too. Uh, yeah. you know, I think, I think the only thing that concerns me now, mostly is just that, like, honestly, like being a barber, like, and talk to people all the time is is very interesting. It can be depressing because you hear all the panic in people, but it's interesting. Mm -hmm. But there's a lot of concern. I mean, there's a lot of people now that kind of feel like this just might be the life we're in for a while. And I think that's the case. I mean, gas isn't going anywhere. The cost of oil is not going down. Um, The food thing, dude, people in, like, I come from a pretty, like, nice area, you know, like, it's, it's very affluent so it's very i enjoy it but 
you know, a lot of people out here are even complaining about the cost of food. Going out to dinner, the yeah. cost is doubled. Going to the grocery store, they call Whole Foods whole check. It's like you just like your everything you buy is just yeah. it's expensive. And those are the only things that worry me. Now, does that now obviously the confusion that people have is the economy is not the stock market. Yeah. So that doesn't necessarily mean we're heading a lot lower. Um you know, but I do think yeah. like kind of slowly, you're going to start seeing less money flow into um, like more public names. Like I think people are going to slow down their spending because of they're trying yeah. to save. And when you see your 401k push put in half, you kind of yeah. start pulling back. Maybe you don't buy that boat or maybe you don't buy the the nice clothes for a, a season or something like that. So I do yeah. think we're going to slowly see it. Yeah. And well, uh, it's funny that you mentioned that because um, where I live in Canada, what you could do is that when you went to school, you could you could work, and if you put so many hours in, you could basically get EI, which is like employment insurance in Canada. Yep. I don't know what, what you guys have there. Yeah, we have unemployment insurance. Yeah. 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 So anyway, uh, when you were a student, you could put in all this work, and uh, you know they would pay you out your EI for like thirty weeks or so when you're going to school. So like my girlfriend got like she was getting like close to like twenty grand you know oh, wow. uh, when she was going to school and like ei basically you know because like you pay into it when you're when you're working and then they kind of like pay you out but now what they've done is they've canceled that for the students in canada no. wow so, so a lot of my girlfriend's friends who just went out kind of uh bought some stuff are like super panicked now because they're like shit like yeah i mean and they have a right to be panicked right i mean yeah the fuck like everything's yeah. doubled in expense and basically you know where we live like basically you know our leader came out and basically said like because we kind of have like you guys have like governors in the states yeah. we have like premiers for like where we live supreme leader trudeau <laughs> yeah yeah well supreme leader trudeau was the one who ended up canceling it yeah but of uh, course it. but uh you know our basically our our premier came out and said well we have a lot of great jobs here so kind of get to work and you know, it's interesting, you know, those kind of comments from the older people, you know, yeah. where yeah. it's like, oh, we have a lot of great jobs here, get to work. But when you're a student, you know, I mean, what type of jobs are you really getting? You know, like sure. minimum yeah. wage, whatever yeah. type jobs. And that extra 20K, you know, helps a yeah. lot, especially. Oh, where, yeah. I mean, uh, where I'm living right now, like the cost of an apartment is like 2K. If you want something like half decent if you want to live in a shack sure yep 400 bucks but i mean no one i i wouldn't even feel comfortable living in yeah, those of type course, of places yeah. like so much yeah. like violence and shit goes on so like um yeah that's definitely definitely a yeah. problem and See, you dude, here here you know, like we don't even get shit like that like we get like there's like you can basically get like un you pay into like what's called like unemployment insurance and like yeah. you know if you're not working like you can fin i know a lot of people who finagle that and yeah and whatever to get some money but it's very small and same thing here first of all most of that money has run out due to covid yeah. um and and i think that now like i'm i'm noticing it with people i know that i mean it, it's a slow kind of bleed into everyday life you know when when gas instead of being 50 dollars a week is now 150 dollars a week or you yeah. know when you're when your cost of living has gone up so significantly a lot of like people I surround myself with, they're getting anxious and they're not really, they don't want to go out. They yeah. don't want to do anything because again, you know, when you're, it's not like the, it's not like our salaries went up, right? It's not like the people that have jobs like yeah. that are making 50 grand now make 65 grand to, to make up for this. And the problem is like, that's not changing. No. You know, I, I think what I've learned over time is, you know, we, we've been talking about this for a while that during COVID, there were so many jobs available. Like no one wanted to work because everybody was living the life, you know, yeah. enjoying the, the free money, which is pr causing a lot of these issues, all yeah. the money printed and all that shit. And now yeah. larger companies like Tesla just did basically like a 10% layoff. Yeah. Um, Amazon's doing the same, you know, there's companies doing this all over. And now there's jobs. There's so many people that need jobs yeah. because they're realizing like, shit, I can't afford my own life. And like that, that to me is the only, the last domino that I worry about yeah, with like too. the stock market itself. Yeah, you know? I, I like, definitely agree. Yeah. I was I mean, just going to cut in and say like, yeah, like I feel like social media also has a part to play in this as well. Because like you see everyone on social media, it's like 
Gucci, Louis, you know, I'm traveling this week. I'm not working. Yep. I'm an influencer. Yep. I'm a this, I'm a that. And that's why like where I live, like those lower paying jobs, which we need, like Burger yep. King, gas station, they yep. need workers. Of course. Uh, no one wants to do these jobs because they're like, oh, I'm better than that. I'm an influencer on social media. I can't do that or this or that. So that puts a strain on the lower paying jobs. And also people are saying, oh, well, I can get money from the government or whatever for a little bit, go on unemployment. I don't need to work here, you know, but um, that's the problem is like the lower paying jobs aren't getting filled and uh, the higher paying jobs are getting cut. So like, yep. where does that leave people? You know, yeah. when you're working at McDonald's, you can't like afford, you know, a mortgage and a car payment and a yeah. supermarket grocery bill like crazy and all these things that pop up, even healthcare in the States, right? Health insurance, you know, all this yep. shit. It's crazy. And you're right. And, and honestly, like, I feel like if I could, dude, if I could, I would nuke all social media. I can't stand yeah. it. I, I think it's, it's doing a lot of harm and like damage to people's like understanding of like what life actually is, yeah. you know, it's exactly what you said. It's like, you know, I, I have like friends that go on and they, like, we have people we went to high school with, again, they grew up with like a lot of money they, or they're successful yeah. themselves. And, you know, they travel and they have all this nice shit and they, and like, you know, the people we follow, like the traders yeah. who do make a lot of money. I mean, you know, Alex, like one of our best friends, you know, he, the guy balls out, you know, he lives a sick life and it's like, Sometimes I think people see that and they're like, well, I'm not going to be able to do that working at, you know, Duncan's or exactly. working here. And yeah. now it's like, they're just like, fuck it, then I won't work. But, yeah. and you know, they're just, they'll, they'll do whatever they have to, to kind of get by. Yeah. But that's a very large trickle down effect for the next 30 years. Mm-hmm. Because if you're not saving now, like if you're in your twenties or even early thirties and you know, you're not putting money away, let alone investing that money. But if you're not putting money away, that's a, that's a trouble because we're also running in the States, you know, we have, um, what's it called? We have social security, you know, so everyone, you know, social security, you're putting all this money into, and you know, when you get to a certain age, you know, you kind of get paid out from that and you get paid out from like your investments, your retirement and all that. But most of the people I know, they're not able now because of the cost, put money away. They can't save. And then if you can't save, you're not putting money into the stock market to eventually work for you and grow. So I don't know where we go from here. You know, I don't even know how they fix that. Yeah, that is definitely a a big, big problem. Yeah. And I also think like for me, my mindset's always been like, I do not like, and I'm not a conspiracy theorist, but I would never want to rely on the government at all for like social security, um, you know, any of those, uh, any of those programs, I would never want to rely on the government because what was that thing that we saw the other day? Like social security, like could run out by 2030 yeah, or yeah, something like that yesterday. in the States. Yeah. Yep. Like, then what? <laughs> then what <laughs> happens? Yeah. I know it's bad. And and that's, that's kind of what I, what I worry about uh, kind of like transitioning it to kind of like crypto and shit. That's what I worry about with crypto. Like I feel like a lot of people were using crypto as like their lifeline, like yeah. their, their retirement. Uh, I mean, I just, I've talked to a lot of people that treat it that way. They're like, Me Oh, too. you know, I got, I got 2 million in crypto, you know, and a lot of people probably figured out how to play taxes with it and all this yeah. shit. And then, and then look at it now, you know, I mean, mm-hmm. I don't, dude, I don't know. I, look I at all those so- NFL players like I'll pay down in crypto or whatever. And it's I was like just thinking that 50% like, less. Yeah. Like OBJ got paid out uh, like a million, uh, whatever it was, his bonus in crypto. And it's like, like was that smart like who the, who told them that that was like a good idea you know and they're still pumping it dude like you see brady like yeah. came out with an nft yesterday and it's like i don't know man like i i know i we talked to like tosh a lot about this but i just have I'm the understanding and i have the belief that like 99 percent of crypto goes to zero or like practically nothing i think so too you know it won't happen overnight bitcoin won't happen overnight but I think Bitcoin's the biggest Ponzi scheme in history. I really do. I think it will eventually be shown. It, of course, it will take a long time, but I don't know, man. It's just like, I've never read a crypto, like anything about crypto or um, any of that shit that really makes me think, wow, this is going to change the world. Like when the NFTs were coming around and people were like, oh, you know, the technology, like eventually they'll be used as concert tickets. I'm like, 
but why? <laughs> like, what yeah, the fuck exactly, do you need man. that for? Like, no one's stealing my damn concert ticket. It's on my email. Yeah. You know, <laughs> I'm fine. You yeah. know, and, and, and we're seeing it now with like guys like um oh, a lot of those like esport guys and stuff like that, you know, like they they invested millions and millions of dollars and that was money that they could afford and now they're down huge. So let alone like think about the average people, you know, that spent fuck tons of their retirement, fuck tons of their money, and now they're down seventy-five percent of it. It's yeah. it's awful. Yeah. And I also think that like I think with Bitcoin, like it's just like the head of the snake, right? It's it's going to be there. I, I really do think that so many institutions have now kind of like bought into this and have their clients in it, that they're not just going to let Bitcoin die. Um, but it's going to be the same thing with NFTs too, right? There's going to be a couple main collections that yep. stick around and hold their value, just kind of like Bitcoin. And like, yep. like, what are the big names that we all know? Like, it's just like in small caps too. Like when yep. I'm looking to long something, I'm like, okay, what are the tickers that everyone's paying attention to, right? Like RDBX, like that was a big runner. People were paying attention to. People kind of love that one. Uh, um, you know, so that was one that I would keep on watch a little bit longer as far yeah. as like multi-day stuff because, you know, everyone is paying attention to it. Like what are the tickers that are not dying and just sticking around? Like almost like Vero too. Like that's a name that we can both roll off our tongues. Yeah. And as for a long trader, like that's stuff that I like because it has that kind of cult following. Uh, that staying power, those Viru homies, just yeah. like GME yeah, and AMC, right? So yeah. I think Bitcoin has that kind of cult. I think a lot of people underestimate the Bitcoin cult, you know, and yeah. it's just the same thing as stock trading, right? People believe in this cult, they make friends in this cult, and they're willing to put every last dime in it. So that is something good that like Bitcoin and Ethereum and a couple of yeah stickers have but as far as the ones that are not that popular like people are messaging me these random tokens like <laughs> even doge like doge is going to have some type of staying power it's going to stick course. around it may not yeah. go to 50 but it's going to stick around right yeah it's so the these people have lifelines <laughs> yeah it's, you know? it's the stuff that people know about that i think will stick around and not die completely and go to zero like despite it's just like you know despite how bad some of these companies are yeah. in trading like what was the ticker that went fucking bankrupt and still shot up you know oh yeah it hurts each tz yeah. yeah like I yeah. Mean, yeah. once you get these cult mentalities yeah um anything can happen so i think that is something good that that has going for it as well yeah and i think yeah. the overall market like everyone is saying these fucking random low ass numbers it never ends up getting there. Even in COVID, everyone was saying that we were yeah. entering a crazy depression. I feel like what people uh, thought we were going to enter into in uh, COVID is like kind of happening now. So yeah. like it took a while and a couple quarters to kind of develop because obviously you can't get away with printing that much money and not having some uh, inflation. And obviously yep. there's the oil situation, like everything's just kind of happening at once, which is really... Uh, hitting people but also I think that like you know um, I think like it'll be a domino effect first thing to go is going to be the stock market then we're probably going to see housing prices you know take a bit of yep. a hit and then you know we'll see a couple other assets and it'll just go one by one cycling through but I don't know if we're going to get a full-on recession where everything happens at once like if we had right now the market crashing, housing prices crashing, everything just crashing, everyone's assets crashing. It'd be a um, depression. Yeah. That would be really, really bad. But I think if we can kind of get away with, okay, the market crashed, but now the market's starting to go up. Okay, but housing's crashing now. Okay, well, the market's starting to kind of go up. It's giving people a bit of like relief. And that's kind of like, if we could kind of run that type of cycle, I think everyone will be okay. But if we all go at once, you know, that would really be yeah. trouble. <laughs> that would that would crush it, but I I don't know. I, I guess my big I have like two kind of like I have a my bear case for Bitcoin in general mm -hmm. is you know when you talk to people about it, a lot of them they they're treating it like they're trading the indexes, like like yeah. people like most people I know who aren't into stock picking, right? They invest most of their money into indexes, Boo, Spy, yeah. whatever, and you know as Boo and Spy are coming down. You could pretty much auto buy, and this is just historically, you could auto buy for the rest of your life yeah. and come out okay. 
You yeah. know, like, I mean, I was still buying Voo and Spy when our, I invest in Voo, but uh, I was still buying that, at, you know, when we were at the highs as I'm still mm-hmm. buying it when we're at the lows, you know, I mean, that's, that's exactly what's going to happen. But Bitcoin, people are treating it that way when his story, they're like, oh, we're buying the dip, we're buying the dip. How much can you average down before you're like, it's nothing, you mm-hmm. know, before you're just screwed. And there's no history to prove that Bitcoin, yeah, what? We've had a couple little crypto winters, they call it. And yeah. sure, it, it's bounced back. But what's going to happen at the time it just doesn't? You know, this, there's, no, there's no history to prove it. And that's why I've, I've kind of stayed yeah. clear of investing in it myself because I'm like, yeah, me too. There's just not, it's not there. And, and to kind of touch on your uh, like recession point, I think the biggest thing, and I guess this is where I guess one benefit of maybe the internet and social media might be. The only reason that we haven't gone into like full on crisis panic mode sometimes I feel like is because there is social media and people can see, you know, like others and like what's going on in the world. Yeah. Whereas like, you know, if you think about the past, like in 08, like after everything went, like the normal people were like the last to figure out about it. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like we, no one found out about like stocks crashing until it just happened. Banks and all this kind of new before us. But now it's like, now that we have so much access to financial knowledge, like through Twitter, through whatever, that mm. we know when things are coming. We know how bad things can get. So I yeah. think like even the average person can kind of like take control of their own like destiny here with like the retirements and all yeah. that. And that's that's why I think we had this little downturn. And again, I, I know I know a lot of people who think we're gonna have this like a depression. And I just think it's I in my opinion is that it's gonna just be a long time shitty economy, <laughs> like for a bit. You yeah, know, I, I think so too. Yeah, I mean, we'll see. We'll see come winter how things change. I think people aren't really talking about yet how you know there's going to be people having to choose between oil, putting oil into their house to heat it versus buying food because you know mm-hmm. the cost and like you know average. Well, that's can't afford another it. thing. Like food, also. Yeah. If, if food skyrockets, that will be definitely oh, a problem. It'll crush people, you know, but. But we'll see. I guess I, I want to. I like time stamping these and seeing where we are, and then that way we we can come back and listen. We're either gonna be we're either gonna be right or it's you know gonna go the complete yeah. opposite way. But yeah. you know, I, it's funny though. Through all of this crap going on right now, the small cap market has actually been like heating up like really nicely. And I don't yeah. know if that's from Bitcoin collapsing and like a lot of the crypto guys are like, shit, I'm not making money. There's no momentum in crypto. Let's go back to small caps. Like, yeah. I don't know what it is. Like, do you, what do you think? Well, I think uh, I saw a tweet about this the other night. Like, people know that their brokerage accounts are not that, like, you can always take money in and out of your brokerage account. There's yeah. never going to be a broker that just uh, flips the switch. Not now, anyway. I think there has been one in the past that did a little sure bit. Sure, <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. But um, yeah. Um, I, I didn't want to go ahead and say that one, but uh, <laughs> now it's out there. But I think people are realizing that there is a little bit more security. Well, there's a lot more security as far as like stocks go. Like, sure, we had a day where Robinhood halted trading for one day. Yeah. Sure, we had, you know, a couple little incidents like that, but we're not full on saying, okay, you're uh, limiting your withdrawals. You can't withdraw any money yeah. for uh, the end of time till we feel like it's getting better, right? Like, we're not yeah. hearing that. So I think that gives a little bit of security too. Also, you know, stocks are on fire. But I also feel like once we see small caps running like this again, we have found a bit of a bottom as far as the the overall market, right? I mean, to me, that's a good sign, right? It's just like in COVID when we were going up and up and up and up and up and up, right? Um, Now that we're starting to kind of get that bottom, I feel like we're going to, you know, be back up again. And to me, like, I kind of like, I'm not really the biggest data guy just because I feel like the same shit happens every day. Yeah. You know, like, I mean, it's okay. Like if you are like a data person, there's like maybe three people that make really big money from it. Um, and then there's some other guys who like do okay in the middle, but like a lot of new traders, if you're just thinking that you're going to have this like magic like system or whatever, I think that that's pretty naive. Um but I mean, I mean, also, because like, to me, like the same things happen every single day, the same patterns repeat every single day. There's no need for me to, to want that extra security. I feel like the system people just can't accept the risk yet that trading has. And if you're just like, okay, I'm going to play the odds every day. 
Um, and I'm going to, uh, you know, I'm going to say, okay, like this is where I should be buying on these certain types of stocks. This is where I should be selling on these certain types of stocks. You will be okay, but some yeah. people who are emotional get chopped up in the middle uh, that really kind of take a beating. And that's why like, you know, a lot of those people end up not doing so well just because like they're not patient enough to wait for the right entries. They're not patient or enough to wait for the right exits. Yeah. And, you know, so I think like definitely a lot of those system guys like just can't accept the risk yet, which, you know, it will come eventually. But yep. for now, um, I think those guys are going to have a really, really hard time going forward. Like people are like, oh, it's winter for system traders. Like, nah, bro. Like, this is just how it is. Like, you know, like not every stock fades every single day. Yep. Well, I, I think, I think the problem with like system trading. You've been like, doing a lot of like that type of stuff too. I don't mean to like shit talk. You, no, no, no. I, yeah, and I'll, I'll kind of explain, but like, I, um, you know, I, I think, I think there's a difference between there's the problem is this idea of system trading has gotten lumped in to like a giant category because of like Twitter, right? Like you, you see yeah. the guys who like, they claim they have this like system that, they enter and it, they hold for a fade or, the, or it's going to do this, it's going to do that. And I just find that 99% of those guys, then because I've talked to a lot of them, they, it's just bullshit. And a lot of them are just products of like a really lucky market. Yeah. Um, you know, and that's, and that's the thing, but you know, like, like the guys I trade with, like I trade with bear uh, and Tyler, you know, like, I mean, we're changing and adapting like every single day, like, and like, we're taking in like, plays and stuff and like we've developed like a system that works for us yeah. as far as like the changing markets and stuff and but the problem is with with these system guys is they refuse to change That's and if, you, if if you don't change like i i personally think that a lot of people thought that the covid market was like that's just because stock food stocks ran like crazy right maybe you take a few cuts on the way up but they were up like multiple dollars and then you could just kind of you get in a good entry and you hold all day and yeah it fucking paid you out huge I mean, we see yeah. it. We see guys making yeah. big money, but nowadays, dude, we've we've had to adapt so much because if that dude, the market is not the same way. These stocks fucking grind. They yeah. rip out of nowhere. You know, they do this, they do that, and it's like if you treat it the same every single day, you're screwed. And I think that ninety nine percent of the system guys probably blew up, you know, or are in a significant drawdown. Which again, I've experienced drawdowns because if you have a system, it's not going to work every single day and yeah. it might not work every single month and that's like a lesson that people have to learn is that sometimes you just have to either not trade or develop other strategies to work while that time isn't you know like we do swing trading as well it just so happened that our swings started to correlate with the bear market you yeah know? you like, started swinging in the fucking yeah. bear market i know call a maggie on his fucking yacht not even we're, trading i know and the guy's living the life and we're like then that's just our signal you know it's like we can't do yeah. that right now we can't do it right now but normal market times, sure, maybe our like strategy isn't really working that great. Now we can focus on swings or we can focus on this or that, whatever. Yeah. And it's it's that's that's the reality, dude. But a lot of these guys, I got a DM the other day. This guy's like, oh, how do you handle a drawdown? You know, and it's like, dude, if you don't have a, a, a system in place for a drawdown, then like it's gonna you'll just you'll blow up. Like every yeah. dollar you make, you're gonna lose it all, you know. Like we we do, you know, as mm -hmm. as as our PL goes up. We, we risk more as our p &L goes down, mm -hmm. we risk less. And, you know, it's, I just think people need to understand, like, I don't know, Harry, have you ever had the kind of like a losing period? Like, I've oh, never, yeah, for sure. Yeah, we never really talked much about it, I suppose. Yeah, like, um, I guess, like, uh, see, it's never been, like, too, too bad. That's the thing. Yeah. The only losing period that I can really remember um, was when I tweeted, uh, um, like, I mean, like actual bad losing period was when I transitioned from first bounce to kind of what I'm doing now. That was a little fucking rough, I got to say. Yeah. First bounces didn't really work that well. So I had to transition. And you, like, I didn't take big losses because I'm, I like to manage risk super well where I'm like, okay, I'm going to risk 10 cents, 20 cents. I have a set plan. Uh, this is it. If I'm wrong, I'm fucking wrong. Yeah. That's it. And so I was wrong a lot when I started first kind of transitioning into uh, what I'm kind of doing now with just kind yeah. of trying to get a good average on a lot of these hot chicks, you know, sell yeah. the rip, whatever. Um, but 
Yeah. And I remember I was also with, uh, cause I saw Dom's podcast on, uh, be the story or whatever, when he was talking oh, yeah. about transitioning to okay. listed and he mentioned me too. Um, like where, uh, you know, I was in kind of like a drawdown period of like coming in, like taking some L's. Um, but it takes time to learn, you know, going from first downs to like a long type of not necessarily system, but like a long, uh, just trading listed longs is very, yep. very difficult, right? You have everything coming at you. It's not like you have to pay a borrow fee. You have access to trade every single ticker on the long side. So how do you differentiate between tickers that run and tickers that don't, right? And also, uh, how do you manage your expectations for yourselves, right? And a lot of it comes down to what you say. You have to adapt every single day and you have to say, what type of market are we in right fucking now? Are we in a fading market, right? Are we yep. in a type of situation where yes. shit just fades every day, right? You know, um, you, you cannot always automatically assume that we're going to be in a strong market. And that's what I was talking about. Like now we're in a stronger market. Like, I don't know if you've seen my cells recently, but like, yeah. Um, you know, on BHAT, I was like, okay, I can hold this a little bit longer past the fifties, right? We're doing a mill a uh, fucking minute, of and it volume. still went past your sell. And you usually sell tops pretty well. Yeah, I usually sell the tops pretty well. Like I've been uh, last two days, I've been like, you know, well, obviously on TBLT or whatever, you know, I just sold highs because it was really starting to struggle up there. Um, it yeah. ended up going to four. Four was my target on it. Um, yeah. But, but, you know, I sold, like, up in 350, 360. That's fine. You know, yeah. same with BHAT. Bought one 12, sold into... Uh, You're not going to nail every top. Yeah, no, exactly. Gonna... But I'm how gonna... do you adjust? How do you adjust yourself on a losing period? Like, because... Because you're obviously a bit more discretionary and like you, you know, you just, you kind of deem whatever size you're going to use based on, on day to day, I suppose. So yeah. how do you, how do you change that when like, a, when, when you notice something's not working, you know, how do you adjust yourself personally? Um, well, for me, I'm just saying, okay, like uh, a lot of the times I'm kind of like using set size per market condition. So if I feel the market hasn't been that great, I will size down significantly. Uh, if I feel the market's hot, then I'm going to start to like size up and get super, super aggressive because like as a long trader, you have to, cause you never know when shit's going to start dying again. So you got to take the fucking grass when it's green and you got to size up aggressively and be willing to do that. Um, and also as far as, uh, just like day-to-day -day targets, like obviously this was a really strong week. So I'm going to push myself to hold a bit past high of day. Right. And maybe as far as like uh, lines go, maybe I can get away with taking some inner lines rather yep. than like ever lines. And as far as kind of fades go, uh, it's really saying, okay, you know, like I took a small cut on bat yesterday that I posted, Yep. you know, it was 20 cent loss or whatever, 15 or so cent loss. But I thought like, after I looked at it, I was like, okay, this was day two, probably shouldn't have taken it, whatever. But yeah. day twos had kind of been decently hot. That was you your know? thing. That was your thing for like three months. Yeah, like day two it? gap ups had been like decently hot. So I think I was right to take that trade, just didn't work, yeah. ended up fading, which is fine. Every system trader on, on Twitter is like, perfect executed system <laughs> trade, bro. I'm like, man, the shit fucking faded all day. Free money set up, bro. I'm like, oh my fucking God. See, that, dude, that's why, though, like, again, and this is someone who traded it the day before. Dude, the broken dude, clock can be fucking right twice a day. Oh, yeah. You need yeah, that, to fucking remember that. I know. It's like, again, and this is what I think is so hilarious also about like the idea of system trading. And like, so if anyone's ever interested in that concept, like, this is very important. You will lose so fucking much and you can never like beat your chest on the wins because like your wins, yeah. yes, when it happens, great money, it like supersedes the loss is huge and like X, Y, Z, blah, blah, blah. But you lose a lot. Like, like BHAT, I'm pretty sure, faded most of the day and then just ripped out of nowhere. Or something. That was day one. That could have been another, one of the other tickers. But, like, that happens all the time. So, like, if you're just looking for these, like, dude, it, it's so true, though. You know, you get one stock that finally just collapses. And it's like, bro, where were you yesterday? Where were you yesterday when this thing fucking ripped yeah. over high a day and, and fucked you over, you know? So yeah. it's it, it's not as easy as people make it out to be. And, and honestly, I think it's – that's why people mess with me all the time. Like, oh, you know, should I do this? I'm like, dude, 
probably not. Like it's fucking, <laughs> it's terrible. You know, it can be terrible. Yeah. So it's just funny, but I'm glad to see the small caps are like starting to come back. I'm glad to see we're actually starting to like see momentum shifts and there's plays for both longs and shorts. Whereas like a month ago we were talking, dude, the market was terrible. It was like, there was barely any opportunity. Like I feel like you were barely even wanting to show up and there was, I, yeah. I was like, I don't, I don't want to fucking be here, well, but yeah. yeah. I wasn't going to go out. Yeah, we went through a small period where I wasn't really winning big. You know, I was I was yeah. making money every day, but I wasn't necessarily winning big. I wasn't losing big either. It was kind of like a little bit of a chop. Um, now I feel like this type of market is where I excel. I'm going to size up completely until the market tells me otherwise. Like we haven't seen a stock open up and just fade all day for a while. No, no, it's been a bit. I mean, it, it's, that's why I think a lot of short sellers have to kind of adjust to that because these the yeah. stocks aren't weak right now. No. Uh, and if you hold on all day, man, like they're gonna get fucking bombarded. You know, I think, I, I, yeah. I think the summer could have the potential to be hot because crypto's down. A lot of people are like, oh, I'm gonna go back to small caps. I'm gonna try and make money at small caps. It could be a fucking nasty summer. It could be a fucking sick one for me. Um, yeah. Oh, for sure. You know, so I'm, I'm definitely, and I hope they're all small cap shorts, you know, hopefully. Yeah. I mean, you need the guys, man. You want the guys that are trying to fucking, you know, yeah. hold and all that shit. Cause they're the ones that create these like monster squeezes as it is. Yeah, exactly. You know, it's exactly. funny, but yeah. yeah, I mean, it's glad what'd you, glad to uh, see where we're at. What'd you think of the live trading on Wednesday? Yeah, that was sick. Yeah. I, I think, uh, I was, I, it's funny. I was actually working. But I like put an AirPod in and was like mm -hmm. watching and listening at the same time, which is probably not great. But I just <laughs> wanted to watch and shit. But dude, no, I thought it, it was good. I think a lot of people. The best part about it was the amount of like trolls and stuff that were like yeah. trolling Alex and Bao and like while like they were a little red and like shit was going on and then like all of a sudden like the Alex is up twenty k and like you know everyone just logged off. Everyone's like, oh fuck, <laughs> you know, it's like it's over, you know. And yeah. and something that I took away from that and. This is something that as like someone who is discretionary, like Alex, like that trading style, people need to understand, like you have to be comfortable with the, with, I don't want to say PL swings. Cause that's, that's not what it is. Like Alex, the way he, people just see the big numbers and they get flustered. So mm -hmm. that's the dumb shit is people see like, he's down eight grand. And they're like, Oh my God. But to Alex, eight grand is like fucking a Dasani water bottle. You know what I mean? He doesn't give a fuck. So yeah. it's like, in terms of your own account, like he said it, I, he's like, I'm playing the chart. I'm not playing my PL. He's like, my PL could be down this, that, the other thing. He's like, if the chart tells me I'm wrong, then I'm wrong and I'll get out. If it tells me I'm right, I look and I'm and I'm green. You know, okay. so it, I think people need to take that away and just start stop being so like tight with everything. There's stops. There's something about the money aspect as much as possible. And then mm -hmm. you'll, you'll realize trading goes a, a lot easier. It was interesting because I was long that ticker actually in the morning. Um that Alex was trading and I was listening to him and I was like, like, it, it wasn't that I disagreed with anything. It was just, yeah. for me, I was like, okay, I'm going to hold to my target. Right. You know? So yep. it was interesting because uh, like, obviously I sold into nine and I never thought that he was wrong either. Like that was what was interesting. I was like, yeah, I see that. But yeah. I just held to my target because that was kind of what I had planned for. And I was like, I told myself going into it, like I wanted to listen to the webinar but I was going to stick to my own plan because yep. a lot of people like I didn't want, like because Alex was like, you know, don't follow me, don't whatever. So I was like, you know what? I'm, I, I think that this can hit nine today, um, which they all warned for as well. They, yep. they all warned that that could hit nine. Right. So I was like, yep. OK, like I, I even wrote in the chat, like, I think this can hit nine. That's my plan. That's how I kind of see it. It hit nine. It ended up going a little bit higher, but I sold into nine because that was my plan. That was my target, right? But yeah. it was interesting, um, you know, kind of seeing the way that they think. And I never disagreed with anything. I was just like, oh, well, going to hold to my target. You know, if they yeah. end up stuffing me, if this ends up going completely lower, I knew it was like highly, highly manipulated. I knew it was like a highly, highly fucking, yeah. uh, you know, crazy ticker. Oh. I just held to my target. And the thing is, was like, like, I, I never really thought it was very, very interesting for me because I was like, he's right, you know? Like, yep. He's like, there's stuff there. I'm like, yep, he's definitely right. I just thought that we could fucking hit nine. 
and we ended yeah. up hitting nine and then maybe going a little bit higher. Did we go close to yeah. like 950 and then that? Nine, yeah, up. 940 or something was the top, I think. Yeah, which like they, that, just, yeah. they just ended up blowing everyone out. But Alex, yep. I thought what, what was smart for Alex was he was like, okay, I'm going to use the set size. I have set risk. I have set, you know, everything. Um, he also nailed all the fucking side chicks too. Like no one even yep. paid attention to those fucking uh, <laughs> side chicks that he nailed. Everyone was focused on the hot chick, you know. Go yep. figure. Right? right. I mean, dude, there's there's two sides to every trade, and I think that that shows a lot of trader maturity in you. Is that like you know there's someone who's as as smart and like talented as Alex and Bow, and and uh, you're still able to stick to your plan. And like, dude, that's 99% of people's problems is they, yeah. they listen to others and they get influenced by others and then they yeah. stick to the, they don't stick to their plan. That would have worked originally. Like imagine if you bailed on that. I would have been and so pissed. Of course, you know, if you were like, oh, Alex is short, I gotta get out. Like just because someone is short doesn't mean that his trade's not gonna work. It doesn't mean that a long yeah. trader is not gonna work. You know, it's, it's just, it, I, I'm, that's impressive that you can do that because it, it's hard. I was trying to like, I, I always, because when I'm in a trade, I always try to understand, like, what someone else's thesis would be. Like, if we're at VWAP, yeah. like, and I was looking to short, like, what would my thesis be, right? If yep. we're at uh, fucking, uh, you know, uh, high a day, right? What would yep. the thesis be to short there, right? What would I be wanting to see uh, for me to get in short there, right? If we're at, you know, above high a day, if we're going into 950 and we don't clearly break above 950, okay, well, that is something that I would look for as well. So I never really thought Alex was wrong. I was like, he's right here, right? You know, like, I'm like, okay, like, yes, that's valid. Yes, that's valid. That's what I was thinking in my head too. I just had that nine target. So I was willing to kind of sit through that to let things kind of play out, right? You know, so it was interesting because like everything he saw was like, yes. That is exactly fucking correct. It may fade from here, but I had accepted my risk. And that was the crucial thing that I had done was I was listening to him and I was like, if he's right and it tanks, that is great for him. You know, I accepted my loss early on on that type of ticker. And it's funny when we see these uh, whole numbers looming above the top of the chart, they always fucking find a way to make the stock get there and stop everyone out, you know? Yep. A hundred percent. It's funny. 100%. Like if you see 350 above high a day, they, they find a way to fucking bring it there. It was just like Jan that day. I saw five bucks <laughs> and I was like, I think Jan can fucking get to five, you know? So I went, I got a very, very good average on Jan. Dinged around in between, got the five. I sold out. And do you remember that day? It just stopped yep. all the way down. It, it yep. was just looming up there. It was just chilling. I was like, okay. This is potential for five, high day, whatever. We got the volume and it worked. And, you know, you just kind of stick to your fucking targets. Like, people are like, man, like, what What did you see down there? What did you see down there? I'm like, bro, I just thought that it could get to fucking five. I don't know how. I literally told some people that. Like, I don't know how. That was just my target on the fucking yep. day, right? Yep. yep. I'm going to hold. And when things don't go my way, I'm going to cut immediately. Yeah. That's, dude, that... That's trading in a nutshell, right? It's like, it's so funny. It's such a simple idea, but like, again, 99% of people can't fucking do it because they just, their, their minds are so heavily influenced. And like, dude, that, that's kind of why I, once I get in a position, dude, it's like, all right, I set my stop and I kind of leave. Like, I, I don't need to sit there because like, I don't want to watch it because it's like the same thing as like getting lost in like tape, right? Like, like obviously yeah. there's, a, there's a master and an uh, artist who are like reading tape and all that shit, but a lot of times you just confuse yourself and then you fuck up your own plan. Like the amount of times I see yeah. a massive buyer pop up just to like be fake yeah. or just to whatever. It's like, if I, if I change my plan according to it, every time I saw a buyer or a seller, yeah. honestly, I'd be, I would have no success. I'd be fucked. I'd be, yeah. I would literally be fucked. You Everybody. Know? How many you know? times do you see uh, a buyer drop lower, lower, lower? It was just like on bad. There were buyers every time the stock bounced, it just kept fucking going lower. Right. Probably yeah. towards covering. Yep, 100%, dude, 100%. Yeah, 100%, dude, 100%. But like it's, like we said, I'm just glad the market's kind of back. Yeah. And, you know, we'll have a lot more to talk about, you know, <laughs> week to week. And we can yeah. you know, talk about some trades. And Yeah, we, know, might, we, and we might bring some fucking people on to talk about it with us. Just oh, normal yeah. people, not even necessarily, uh, you know, it, like we can just talk to fucking everyone and just do yeah. something like that. Like run some shit like that, you know? Oh, yeah. So if any, any guests ever do want to come on, you know, DM Harry or I. 
Um, we can set yeah. something up. If you want to come learn, if you have questions, if you want to just talk about, you know, yeah. market and stuff going on, please let us know. I feel like uh, everyone feels like they have to be like this consistent millionaire, oh, fucking yeah. whatever. But like for us, like it's fine. Like we talk to regular fucking members every single day. We talk to everyone every single day. You know, if you want to come on here and be anonymous and, you know, set your name oh, as whatever and, and don't want to talk and don't want to fucking show your face, like, that's fucking fine, too, you know? Like, we're yeah. just trying to we're just trying to make things as, like, entertaining but also educational, like, to try and find that balance, something that you can, you know, chill and listen to in the car. But, like, we're not, like, pull up chart to A, B, C, D here, <laughs> section 1-2. You know, we do nothing, nothing that, like that, you know? A hundred percent. So, all right, cool. Well, thank yeah. you, guys. Um, we will be back with another episode soon, and uh, yep. we'll see you then. All right, Later. see ya.